what's up everybody some sad news i sold my trans am i wasn't really looking to sell it but an uh, offer came through that i just couldn't refuse so i took it i paid off some of my debt i have some money left over and i was really wanting a four-wheeler again and i just happened to have something roll through yesterday that uh, we were going to actually sell to the uh, scrap yard to the uh, guys that part these out and it was going to be cannibalized and pretty much sold for parts. And uh, it ran too good. I got on it, gave it a test drive. I had to bring it back from up front. And uh, I gave it, I got on it, uh, immediately drove it around, had plenty of power, popped a wheelie with it. If I can stand up a four wheeler and uh, it drove good and runs good and has plenty of pep. I don't want to see it going to the scrap yard, so I purchased it for what the uh, scrappers were going to get for it. And yeah, you're looking at my 2005 Kawasaki 700 Prairie. Uh, yeah, it needs some work, but for the price I gave for it, I can afford to have some work put in it. it needs four tires. Uh, needs back tires a little more now after I just got done doing a tremendous brake stand with it. <laughs> it's one of the only four-wheelers I know you can do a brake stand with. Mainly because I think it's the only one that has uh, the front and rear brakes separate where you can actually just use the front brakes to lock it up. But yeah, it's got plenty of torque. Uh, it had, uh, or it's got a lot of miles on it. It's got 13,143 miles on it. It's got about, uh, I don't know if I can keep this on long enough. The battery is shot. 1,443 hours, which isn't horrible hours compared to mileage this thing's been spent most of its life running down the road or something because it's pretty uh low hour to miles comparison the reason other reason i bought this is when this came through my uh, co-worker uh recognized this machine and remembered this machine from a few years ago where uh, it came through the shop and it came through and did a full motor rebuild at about eight thousand miles so it's got about four thousand miles on the uh, rebuild a little over 4,000 by 5,000 be yeah uh, wouldn't that be yeah about 4,000 5,000 about 5,000 miles on it on the rebuild sorry for my poor math skill there but yeah pretty much 5,000 miles on the rebuild and it still runs really really good can uh, pull a good wheelie and can pop a good brake stand so yeah I would never do that to a new set of tires and I would never do that to a machine that I paid more than three thousand dollars for but anything under $3,000 fair game to do a burnout with and beat the hell out of, in my opinion. Uh, for 13,000 miles, it's a very solid machine. The plastic's not totally destroyed. The front bumper is a little beat up, but most of them were. It's got a worn 2,500 pound winch on it that does not work right at this moment. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know if it's the winch or the actuator, what it is. I'm gonna look at that and get that working probably. Get a new cable or a synthetic rope for it. But for 13,000 miles, the suspension is ridiculously nice. Uh, hardly any play in the bushings. The front shocks are shot. They are completely garbage at this point. But the bushings are good. Uh, I thought I had a bad tie rod. Turns out it was just a little loose. I tightened it up. Perfectly fine now. I've got hardly any play up here in the handlebars. Everything's moving. It's pretty solid. I am really impressed with this machine because if this was uh, Polaris, it'd be shot. This is coming from a Polaris owner. This is my first Kawasaki. Coming from around here, I know working on uh, between the both, we do a lot more Polarises than we do Kawasaki's. And I know there's a lot more Polarises out there, but all the Prof XTs we've sold, we've had one come in for a bad uh, map sensor and a bad fan switch. And that's it. Well, the rest of them were services no major repairs on a prof xt whatsoever and there are a few we've sold that didn't go to the most uh loving homes and we spend a lot of time working on polaris's that's a brand new one right there if you need a 900 let us know we got like six of them things here so <laughs> but uh yeah whip sells a service to Iowa. iowa if you need one let us know but yeah this is my new toy i'm not gonna put a lot of money into it i was wanting to paint it but i'm thinking i'm just gonna keep the uh, real tree faded camo on there i may eventually pull off scuff it and throw a flat black paint job or 
something on it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna get four new tires because this one will run air out as fast as you can put it in. It's shot. I'm still driving around on it. Good way to end up with a broken neck. But uh, yeah, the rear, of course, like I said earlier, are slowly getting deteriorated. I made a pretty good smoke show with it, so pretty good. But yeah, this is it. Uh, I don't plan to do much to it. I thought about an exhaust and a aftermarket ECU just to get rid of the reverse override. But uh, yeah, my uh, four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive light flash back and forth. I don't know if it was doing it there. It will come out of it occasionally. But I had it up on the stands, verified the four-wheel drive works, the front diff lock works. Uh, I haven't took the belt out to check the belt, see what it looks like, check the clutch, see how much wears on the clutch. I'm sure the clutch is probably shot, but uh, we'll take it, look at it. The uh, bill when they rebuilt this motor was about uh, $4,000. It dropped the valves on the front cylinder. And uh, they put a new head on it, and it still looks pretty clean. There's an oil leak on the back. I'm going to figure out what that's from. They put a new actuator on the clutch or the front diff. I'm not real sure which one it was, but I'm not sure if this isn't tripped, but that would cause the belt light to blink, so I'm not real sure. My module could be bad also, but the four-wheel drive works, not a less. I just don't know what it's in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the clutch cover off probably tomorrow after work and take a peek. I'm going to order all the stuff to get a good service on it, uh, do air filter, oil filter, front diff and rear diff and everything, and automatic, odd, eh. obviously engine oil. Uh, checked coolant. Coolant looks good. Don't see any signs of oil. Checked uh, engine oil. No sign of water that I can see. I haven't changed it yet, so that could change when I change it, but it runs too good to have a blown head gasket. Uh, fuel gauge works. Headlights work, taillight works. Uh, basically, I would have preferred a brute force to have independent rear suspension, but I love the uh, solid axle for wheelies, uh, donuts, and burnouts. Even though a 750 could do a burnout just as easy as this machine could, probably even easier. But uh, the machines are still quite valuable. You can find a few here and there cheap, but... I always like the look of the Prairie a little better than the Brute Force. There's a, I don't know, Kawasaki in the looks department is, I, they kind of don't have the world's greatest looks, but I kind of like the look of these. I like the metal racks a lot, but I just wanted something I could beat on and this is it. So I don't know if I'm going to do many videos on this. Uh, it may do be simple stuff. I thought about recovering my seat and fixing this because it's not totally horrible yet. I can fill that in with some foam there. And yeah, I think it would be all right. But yeah, I'm going to get four tires for it. There are 25 8 12s on the front and 25 10 12s in the rear. I want to go with 26 9 12s on the front and 26 11 12s on the rear. Some cheap uh, Wanda's off of Amazon. I can get them for 300 bucks, 305 bucks a set. So. Miles will give them a try their six ply, so see if they're any good. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to order a used overflow tank that's broken. Uh, antifreeze is full, I checked it. Just gave it a once over to see before I purchased it to see if there wasn't anything really drastically wrong with it that would make me regret my decision. Everything looked good enough, so I went ahead and bought it today. And uh, yeah, it's in my possession. And I do like the rear mounted. Uh, fuel tank it has a good uh, center of gravity on these machines as well so yeah i don't know depends if i get a gopro i might do some riding videos but mine are mainly gravel roads and mud roads toying around so yeah stay tuned for more on this beast and uh i might keep this bad boy a little longer for what i got in it so Unlike my uh, lemon head project, my Predator, my Razor. Yeah, all them that didn't stay very long. And the Predator I put maybe four miles on. I love that bike, but I just never never rode that four-wheeler very much. I miss that four-wheeler. I like that four-wheeler a lot. Uh, but yeah, if I'm, I'd like to get another Predator. Uh, and if I get another one, I want to go through on it. I'd like to uh, sandblast the frame, get the plate and frame powder coated, get the arm powder coated and do all that and just make a really really nice kind of like a show bike 
But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. This is it. And, uh, yeah, I wanted something I could beat on. Because, basically, I built all the last four-wheelers I had. They were all too pretty to beat on, in my opinion. Uh, Lemonhead was a... I love that four-wheeler. That was a nice bike. I don't know why I keep calling them bikes. But they were a nice, nice four-wheeler. Nice quad. Depends on where you're from, I guess. I just satisfied a bunch of people by calling it all those. But, yeah. I really liked all my four-wheelers I've had. But they were all too pretty to do something on. I think I'm just going to put tires on this. Make it a good, solid, reliable machine. And just drive it. Just don't care about the if it gets scratched. Or whatnot. I might take it apart and scuff it. And put a paint job on it, too. Something flat. Something... Maybe a flat black, maybe a orange or something. I don't know. All depends. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more videos on this beast. I might put a little money into it. I'd like to put an aftermarket uh, EC unit, maybe an exhaust. I don't know if I said that. But yeah, just something simple. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next video. So don't you guys have too much fun doing a brake stand with your four-wheelers. So catch you guys in a bit.